Letter to Africa, written by a man who's built and run hotels all over the world, but never known a place like this home. Hi everyone and a warm welcome to Top Billing. I'm Ursula. The words, I have a bush lodge in the Waterberg, are reminiscent of the opening lines to a movie. And truth be told, there is a story behind our location here at Fever Tree Lodge. Part fiction, part history, but all in all, it's the kind of setting that'll make you long to escape to a beautiful part of the Mabula Mukaikai Game Reserve. After developing hotels for entrepreneurs like Sol Kersner and Giorgio Armani, Bruce Hutchison took early retirement. His idea of pottering about? Building this. I'd been told that you absolutely adored the motherland, but I had no idea to what extent. Unbelievable. Well, each area in the lodge, each room in the lodge, is inspired by either a person or by a culture, a group of people. And that is what allowed me then to create the interiors of this lodge. There are bronzes and game sculptures, Boer War relics, and East African Omani doorways leading onto epic views. Each a stopover in Bruce's private time machine. What gave birth to this outdoor lounge and the dining area and the pool deck is actually the Swahili people. Their culture was infused many hundreds of years ago by the arrival of the Omani Arabs from the Middle East. So as you can see around you, there are doors that represent those carved doors you would find in Zanzibar, as well as in Oman. Furniture pieces like this one here, which is a window for a lady's patio. Bookcases made out of door frames and a lunchtime table made out of an actual Omani door. It must have taken a tremendous amount of time and effort to get all this down here to South Africa. Well, I was very lucky traveling around the world, developing hotels, so I could source things and buy them and put them on a container and send them out here. And again, you couldn't begin designing this home without owning that door and measuring it and building the house around those two entrance doors. Bruce's choice of this Flemish design chandelier, authentic furniture and Dutch china, make this the perfect set for a period drama. Here we go back in South African history, all the way back to the 1600s, when the Dutch East India Company settled in the Cape. And here is that company's old logo, VOC. I recognize that from history. Yes, and it the stands. Dutch East Indian Company. That's right, Vereenigde Oersee Company. And all the furniture in this room is all authentic old Cape Dutch furniture, celebrating the discovery, as far as Europeans are concerned, of the Republic of South Africa. Unbelievable. Hey, there's a dromedaris on a plate. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the three ships that landed at the Cape, uh, which Jan van Riebeck brought here. And they gave birth to the Cape Dutch architecture, the Cape Dutch furniture. They gave birth to, a lot to the, the rich heritage of our food, which were then blended with Malaysian food and local African food to give us our own South African culture. Oh, you are Encyclopedia Bruce Annika. Having also been a chef in world-renowned hotels and restaurants, Bruce boasts as many recipes as he does tales of African history. And we're better to enjoy them both than right here. This is the kind of kitchen that many cooks I know would be completely envious of. It's amazing. And it's also amazing, Ursula, how this room has ended up being the most popular and most used room. Over a weekend, the people just gather here. And it was inspired, actually, by the French Huguenots who came to the Cape and began our wine industry. And once again, the room was designed around antiques. You needed to own and have catalogued these antiques because this piece here and that antique over there in the island gave the dimensions of the room. So the room was built around furniture rather than the furniture into the room without a plan. The local Klipspringer enjoy the 900 tons of rock he returned to the site after building. 
And if Rhodes had a bridge thrown across Victoria Falls, then Bruce built his own. And at the end of it, a romantic hideaway. This is actually the, the master bedroom. And what inspired this room, I'm sure you recognize, it's, <laughs> it's British colonialism. It has certain antiques from Indonesia that would have been brought here on the spice route past the Cape, an antique uh, fireplace. And it's, uh, its structure is sort of a British gentleman's study come bedroom, come dressing room. I love how masculine it is and so refined. Are the other suites quite similar? No, actually not. Again, I've used the opportunity in all the bedrooms to bring something that I love in Africa forward. For instance, um, there's the room that is sort of dedicated to Cecil John Rhodes in the Victorian era and the empire builder who wanted to paint Africa red from Cape Town to Cairo for the Queen. The room that gave me the most challenge is it's the Maasai. Oof. Now, here you had no reference point. You had no history of furniture or decor. You had to use the inspiration in an abstract form and create your or my version of the Maasai room. And I allowed colors to dictate there, the ochre and the earthy colors and the fact that they were cattle herdmen. And I chose the Maasai tribe because somehow I admire them, the ability that they have, although they are so fond of their cattle and cattle are so valuable to them, they live in total harmony with wildlife. Something that the settlers in this continent have never achieved. Three years ago, he met and married Leanne, a self-made maverick of a woman. To her father, he then paid a lobola of his most prized rhinoceros bull. Leanne, I must say, I've been completely blown away by the work your husband has done here. What grabs you about what he's done? Every single thing was designed uniquely by him. It's, it's the sum total of his whole life. The passion that went into it is exceptional. Passion, magic, adventure. Passion, magic, adventure. Bruce, I think that sums you up in a nutshell. The biggest gratification for me is to see it through even your eyes, whilst you were here. Surrounded by a forest of 170 fever trees he planted, this is also the place where Bruce and Leanne have decided to put down their own roots. Up next, join Mercasa's Jay Something, Moti and Dr. Duda, and tweet us if you think Simba should join the band. Casa es su casa. In Spanish, that means my house is your house or make yourself at home, which is exactly what we're doing here at Fever Tree Lodge. Now, when it comes to multiple Sama nominations,